Thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up. Thank you for being with us this Easter morning and with me and trusting that the wonderful coaching I've received so far pays off and we have a wonderful Easter service. I'm going to begin with meditation and that meditation that we're going to do this morning is Ho'oponopono because it seems to me that what we need right now is peace of mind and love for one another. So I'm going to get settled and then I'll lead you through it. I'm going to turn on some music. And Turn on some music, and then I'm going to lead you through this. Ah, this is a Zeta meditation music. So I invite you to just relax, let go, and be fully present right here, right now. Take a moment just to go within, to find that place of stillness and love within. If it helps to get still, imagine that you're deeply rooted in the earth from your feet and from your spine. You have shot down deep, deep roots. You're unmovable, unstoppable. You are the peace that passes understanding. <sighs> so then just take a moment Take a holy moment right now and let divine mind guide you to whatever it is that is going on in the world of effects. It could be something personal, like the illness of a dear friend or the passing. It could be something that's collective, like the CV-19, the COVID-19 virus. But whatever it is, what I know is the healing power of the collective is present in each one of us. So here's the Ho'oponopono. We'll go slowly. First of all, you think of that thing and then deeply, with as much tenderness and gentleness as you can, you say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then you take complete responsibility for everything in life. Not blame at all, but responsibility because we are all connected. So the next line is, please forgive me, please forgive me. Please forgive me. And then imagine that beloved or that collection of beloveds doing that forgiving. And the next words are simply, Thank you. Thank you. And the final line in Ho'oponopono is, I love you. I love you. This time as we go through it, 
Imagine the people that you love the most. And whether they're there with you or not, whatever is going on for them, again, just say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And in the silence for a few minutes, we will do this process together, simply allowing the peace that is our natural, normal expression of the Christ within, our peace be the healing for everyone, including the entire planet. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm saying it for my kittens who are outside in the hallway, lonely and crying, and they will be okay. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And then in the stillness, in the silence, in this holy moment, we'll just continue in the silence and sacredness of our own mind.
in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to ring the bell three times. Let the first ring bring you back to the present moment. Let the second ring make you aware of the greater I am that you are. And let the third ring, the present moment, I am, the third ring, have you completely grounded and fully present. Easter. Easter is such a wonderful, wonderful celebration. It's a celebration, of course, of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. And it has actually four, four meanings that I'm going to explore this, mean, this morning. The, um, and this didn't, I didn't invent this. Of course, there's nothing new under the sun, but we're always using ideas that we've borrowed from someone else. This came from the 1956 Science of Mind magazine, and no, I what didn't. This was not mine. I was a child in '56, and and this is Fletcher Harding, and Fletcher Harding was a student of Ernest Holmes, and and famous in our movement now. He talks about the four things. First of all, Easter is morning. So if we think about the story of Jesus, the ordeal of the crucifixion, and Jim Lockhart, my colleague and friend, points out that without the crucifixion, the resurrection doesn't make sense. So it's the whole idea of mourning, that every morning we have an opportunity to open our eyes and see more clearly, to see the truth, to see the light to see from a transformed consciousness, to see the wholeness and the aliveness and the wisdom everywhere. It has to start, first of all, from within us. In order for that morning to come, which it does every 24 hours, it's, there's another one, and there's another one, Oftentimes we get stuck in the dark night. I think the morning will never come. And yet the morning reminds us to stretch, to, to awaken, to cast off the night, to cast off the sleepiness and be fully awake, to be fully awake to who we are, what we are and where we are. Fletcher Harding said this, Easter is morning. This majestic burst of light that proclaims the new day, morning, a cat's long, slow stretch, a refreshed mind, a rested body, the expectation, expectant stillness poised for the action that high sun is sure to bring. Reprieve, new beginnings, fresh streets, fresh slates. Easter is conclusion of an old cycle. Ending in surrendering to the good that is yet to be. The heavy past with its griefs, fears, failures, ghosts of unreality falls in comparable defeat, in complete defeat. Before the incoming burst of the Easter, proclaim a new day. This is a new day. 
And every new day we have an opportunity to change from yesterday. To see our life as good and very good and only good. I was doing some counseling the other day and a woman is a long time religious scientist and, and she knows this principle. And she was trying to discover what thoughts had brought her into this, the place that she was in, which was a place of self-creation. And we've all, many of us have been there. Guilt, shame. I said, you know, I don't think it's about the thoughts. I think you need to look at the feelings. What? What are you feeling? She made reference that there was a four-year-old inside her who was turbulent and was running the show. I said, well, why don't we touch base with that four-year-old? See what it is she wants and needs, how she's feeling. And that was like turning the switch, starting a new day. Because indeed, the four-year-old just wanted to be held just wanted to be assured that all was well and all will be well. That inner child within us, that aspect of self is so important. It's so important that we recognize that one was the one that was afraid of the dark. Most of us as adults are not. We've given up those, those childhood beliefs fears and traumas and here we are it's a new day and it's an easter day it's a good day it's a brand new start day a brand new start so much of it depends on us how we're seeing our life whether it's a new day or the same old day one of our members, Mary Brogdon's daughter, Jennifer, had a wonderful demonstration of bringing a consciousness, a shift in consciousness, what a difference it makes in a day. Jennifer is one of our essential workers. She um, works at Trader Joe's as a checker or whatever else they do in Trader Joe's. I know it's a lot. So she is on the line all the time. She's one of the ones I'm so very grateful for because she has been there even though her health and well-being have been at risk. And the day before she discovered how she can make a difference in her own life, she'd had a pretty bad day. And part of it was because, or maybe it was because, some guy had come into the store, had been rude and obnoxious. He had been complaining loudly the whole time about why did he have to wait? And why did he have to stand so far away from people? It was all about him. And it, it was annoying. Shift. The next day, Jennifer thought about it and she thought, what if she did something good for the rest of the staff? And so she decided to take breakfast to them, pick up some breakfast burritos and, and surprise them with this gift. And, and, and she also picked up some, some things that her mother needed and some other people needed. And she came home that night filled with joy, with love. And it's about being in service with an attitude of, I can make a difference. I can make a difference. Back to our whole Pono Pono prayer. That was created by, uh, uh, or, or brought back to life. It's an old Hawaiian practice, brought back to life by a psychologist by the name of Len Hugh, or Hugh Len. I always get them twisted around. Nevertheless, he was a supervisor, uh, became the supervisor of a hospital for the criminally insane. All of the staff was terrified of this place. They were terrified of the patients and of each other. 
They didn't walk down the hallways. They slid, slid against the wall, the, the walls of the hallways to go from room to room. There was a huge turnover in staff until this new guy, Hugh Lynn, came and something happened to the atmosphere. The atmosphere changed, it improved. He wasn't out around this, the patients, but people stopped getting sick. The staff stopped getting sick. The staff started liking their jobs. And in that liking their jobs, there were miracles happening all the time. Soon, the patients that had been criminally insane, this was a sentence to be in this hospital for the rest of their lives. Soon they became released until finally all of the patients were released because they had recovered and the hospital was closed. All because the wonderful Hawaiian blessing, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Hugh Lan had taken every single one of the patient's charts and just prayed that prayer over each one. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I know personally, I think this is a great time to do the Ho'oponopono prayer for our entire planet. For anyone that's blaming anyone for anything, for this pandemic, and then starting to look for the good that could come out of it. It's a new day, a new dawn. The second thing I'd like to say is Easter is spring. My talk title is Broken Open. And in spring, there are so many, there's so much evidence of broken open. The chick doesn't just come out of a chocolate egg. The chick pecks his way out until the shell breaks open. The butterfly doesn't just pop out of the cocoon, but struggles until it comes out of the cocoon, until it comes out of the cocoon. And then, and then, if it is had to come out on its own with the struggle, with the effort, it flies free. So spring, Easter is spring. It's a time I love to see the the trees are leafing out and even here in Southern California where it's subtle, it happens, it happens more subtly than in other places where, um, where I grew up, it's still far from spring. It's far from spring in April. Um, you may remember I posted something when I was visiting my mom. She was in hospital one April and it, <laughs> it was a snowstorm. And it was mid-April, probably the 12th or 15th or so. It was a huge snowstorm. There, there was six or eight inches of snow in Saskatoon that day. But Easter is spring. And actually, long before Jesus walked the earth, the ancient peoples celebrated the awakening of spring at this time of year the awakening of Mother Nature, the returning of life to the plants and the soil and the animals and the birth of the animals, which reminds me of some good news. 13 years ago, Ling Ling and Ying Ying and Li Li, two giant pandas, were put in the zoo in Hong Kong to mate. For 13 years, they have snubbed one another. For 13 years, there's been no attraction. But this COVID-19 virus caused no, the, the um, zoo was closed. There were no visitors. They had privacy. And the, and the giant pandas mated. Isn't that great? It's spring. It's natural and normal. And here's the other thing I found out about giant pandas. 
Yin Yang's fertility is only for 24 to 72 hours. So we don't know yet whether she is pregnant, but wouldn't that be a wonderful outcome of this slowing down, of this total stoppage of all of our regular activities in the world. And we celebrate spring. We celebrate spring. So Fletcher Harding said this, the silent retreat of Earth's crust before the advance of new birth, roots of seeds reaching deep for a fresh grip on life. Trees poised to spring forth in full leaf, the lily of the field. Again, the same as of old, sharing its beauty. Arrayed in its glory of Easter or silent sermon for all who behold. The hallelujahs sweep all space and um, and overtones of life. The, the mating call of the drake in the marshland and the bride embraced. The love of God reaching into its own depth to mold and time, alerted in anticipation of life's demand to give. Easter is spring, the promise of forever. Life goes on. The third point is Easter is an open tomb. This is the best news and for us religious scientists, metaphysicians, this is the message of Easter. Although it is also spring and it is also morning, the message of Easter is that the tomb was empty, that there is no death, that life is eternal, that we are not these bodies that seem so solid, that seem so full of whatever they seem full of, that we are not these bodies, but we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And eventually the bodies will decay, go away and be, re be replaced by who knows, but a different form because life is eternal. We continue. The tomb was empty. I often think about the women that went to look after Jesus and found that the tomb was empty and what they must have thought, how fearful they must have been. And then to have them, them meet Jesus, now resurrected the Christ, that presence on, in, on their way back, that, that they didn't recognize him at first and neither did the other two disciples. Because I would say that transformation changes us, wouldn't you? That when we're transformed, we're unrecognizable to our past lives because our past lives is gone. It's gone, it's been crucified and we've been resurrected. We become those butterflies that squeeze themselves out, learning how to learning how to work those wings squeezed out from that chrysalis into the beauty of a brand new form. The butterfly does not resemble its former self in any way. And neither, neither do we as transformed beings resemble our old self, our fear, fearful selves, our judging selves. That self is gone, was crucified. We let it go so that a better self could come forward. And Fletcher Harding says, start grim yet glorious evidence that life will not succumb to the grave. Even the house of death cannot remain sealed. The very life of life will tear the latch with hands of power to fling back the stone that binds. Karen Rick have a wonderful song, Roll Away the Stone. Life, 
Life leaves all tombs standing empty and open, yawping mouths, whimpering protest, hollow tones revealing the frustrated nothingness of the deserted singer, the open tomb, life's laughter at the ignorance and unbelief upon which the ghost of death feeds, the open tomb, Easter forever declaring, look not here for life. Look not here for life. There is no death. There is only eternal life. <sighs> and Easter is the open road. It is the infinite possibilities that lie from each present moment to the next. The infinite possibilities that are just calling to each one of us. What new thing is coming for you? I want to, um, I, I want to just say the new thing that has come for me is all of this technology that I had no clue how to do. Well, I was grateful for it. I was grateful that it was being done. And now here I am all by myself, except for virtually people are helping me, all by myself here in this beautiful home with these wonderful candles and the peace of mind, the peace that passes understanding. So Easter is the road. I'm reminded of the Beatles' long and winding road. It, it, well, to your door, but it's the door is really to your door of yourself. That we, each one of us, are called to a journey that only we can do. It's the hero's journey, and it is that thing within us that is calling us to be greater than we know we are. It is, the, it is the greater self, the God self, the infinite self, and it is always beckoning us to a greater idea, to a new road, to a new possibilities. I was reading this morning in Facebook that my teacher Sue Rubin was was saying that she was finally, after many years, many, many, many years of praying for the willingness to write that she has been writing. So there is no time or space in that open road. It simply calls to us. What's the next greatest thing? So what a great thing for you to contemplate on this Easter day with a heart filled with love and joy for the certainty that life is. Life is eternal. Your life is eternal. My life is eternal. All of your children's lives are eternal. Your parents' lives are eternal. Your grandparents' lives. Each and every one of us to contemplate what is the next big thing for me? What is the next big thing for me? And one of the things that I you know, I read an article by Dwight D. Eisenhower, and he was talking about um, having conversations with other military men, which is an odd thing for me to read, but nevertheless, I was reading it. And he said that they'd been talking about what kind of person, what kind of person do you put in those key positions that are so important. And they discussed it quite a while. They, they talked about selflessness, about having an idea that's bigger than you are, and that that bigger idea will take you to so many places. Selflessness and total responsibility, complete responsibility. I think that's the only thing that works in my life is no blame, no shame, just I am 100% responsible for what is in my life. 
And if I want a different life, I don't change the things out here. That's like putting makeup on a mirror. I change in here. And by that changing, my whole world changes. We're more powerful than we think we are. We are way more equipped, more fully equipped than we've ever known before. Right now, there's enough supply, there's enough. And that thing that knows itself as you, that's greater than you are, is the source, is the creative process, is divine mind. And it is singing its love song to you. One of the things that really uh, inspired me this week was um, on Good Morning America, which I haven't been watching any news, but I turned Good Morning America on a couple of days ago, and it was toward the end, and I got the last 15 minutes. They have a, um, a, a, a person or persons that do a live thing, but of course it's live via some something something like Facebook or Zoom or or something like that. It's live, but it isn't live. And they had um, Disney singers all over the United States in their own homes, and they sang together, I Can Go the Distance. That's the hero's journey. No matter what it is that you're dreaming of, that is a dream that God planted in your heart, in your mind, for you to do. And it probably starts out in these days with who are you being? Who are you being? What are you bringing to the beingness of this day? That dream. So I've said it before and I say it again. One of, our, one of the main things that we're called to do right now is to hold fast the vision of what we do want for ourselves, for our center, for our city, for the world. What is it that you do want? And what I want is for people to be well and happy, healthy. What I do want is for prosperity to be normal and natural, for all jobs to be returned and, and the economy to be solid. What I do want is for people to realize that each one is making a difference. What I do want is connection. And of course I want connection, I want the hugs that I'm missing, but it's more than that. I want the connection of all the members of our community and of all Centers for Spiritual Living communities and all churches everywhere. This Holy Week has been celebration of Christian churches, but it's also Passover. So including our Jewish friends that each one is included in my life, in my, in my meditations, in my life. Every person that is afraid is included in my meditations and prayers for that fear is nothing but misplaced faith. It's a belief in a power other than God. So it, belief in two powers. And what I know is that there is only one power and we are using it with that and especially with those feelings, especially with those feelings. So what is it that you passionately feel? What do you passionately know? That's the thing that you bring to this moment. And that is the thing that makes this Easter a happy Easter, even though it's a completely different one. It's the strangest Easter ever. So I'm going to end with a story. A man stopped the, there was a big Easter service at a huge church and people were coming out. They were all thanking the pastor for his wonderful, inspiring message and for the wonderful music. And uh, he said to, well, Mr. Smith, I don't think I've seen you since Christmas. Are you a Christmas Easter Christian? And Mr. Smith looked at him and he said, I'm in the secret service. So don't be in the secret service, be in the awareness of the power and presence 
is in you and through you and you are making a difference in our community just the way you are and why not. I love you, love you, love you. And so it is. I'm going to I'm going to play a beautiful song that Diane King Van recorded for us. So pardon me a moment. Last week you thought that I had maybe gone out to a record player because it took so long. This week I brought props. When it's not me, when I'm being the sound person, I have a new hat. Okay. So. Here we go. This is Diane King Van. Thank you, Diane. She recorded that especially for us this morning. And let's pray together. I'm going to include in this prayer the, all the people that are at risk, all the people that have made their transitions, all the people that are um, worried, and every single one of us. I'm going to speak it in the first person because that is where the power is. This is what I know is true. I know that there is only one life. I know that that life is God's life. That life is whole, complete, and perfect. 
absolutely every way. That life is my life right here. It is in me, through me, around me, and for me. This one that is source of all creation is right where I am. It is the Alpha and the Omega. It is that without beginning and without end. It is that eternal I am that is within each one of us. What I know is that this one moving through me is peace of mind. It is the peace that us is understanding. It is the awareness of God's presence of good, no matter what, that this good is in, through, around, and as all. I know that this, this one that is perfect peace in me is that healing power of life that is love. It is that thing that sees through the eyes of wholeness, that knows that life is eternal and that all is well, that the healing power of God's love is moving through every cell, every tissue, every function, every fiber, every, th every particle of our being, every particle of our physical being, spiritual being, financial being, every creative being, every particle of our being is filled with God's love, is filled with the energy of aliveness and life, is filled with that, the new possibilities of the open road, is filled with the peace that passes understanding. What I know is that the presence and power of God in me is greater than my circumstances is greater than these circumstances, has never been sick and has never been afraid. And so that place there where fear has resided is now shone with the light of truth and faith, faith answers. There is no one there. There is no such thing in that place of fear it just disappears into the nothingness from which it came. And I know that not only am I that, that power and presence, I am the financial well-being, the prosperity of the one life. That source of supply is within me. And that source of supply supplies all right here, right now. It is enough, sufficient for absolutely everything. It is first cause to all creation. I know that that supply continues to support me and to support all beings. I know not only the health and the wealth and the well-being, but I know the connection of love with other people and with ourselves is the greatest power there is. And I know that the healing power of love is occurring for each one of us in this moment by just saying yes, yes to the resurrection, yes to the new idea, yes to the transformation, yes to the wholeness, yes to the new beginnings, yes to the spring of our lives. With my heart just filled with gratitude, I simply release this word to the action of law. I know it's complete. And so I just simply say, and so it is. So this is our time now to give and to receive. This is the time of circulation. And I just want to, want to say um, about gratefulness. How grateful I am for so many people. I'm grateful for Diane King Van and how she helped me design my my set in a better way, how she helped me with the music. I'm grateful for Aiden Greeny, who's prayed with me every single day for the last four weeks, I believe, three anyway, where that we have prayed for the center and for every one of you in the center. We've prayed and it's been such a gift to me. I'm grateful for all of the all of the essential workers, 
all of the responders, the first responders, the nurses, the doctors, the all, all of those beings that are allowing us to stay home, that are allowing us to flatten the curve by doing what is right. So with my heart just flooding over with gratitude, I give thanks. And then I give thanks for our center and what I know is that our center has expenses, whether we're there or not, whether anyone comes or not. There's a mortgage, there are utilities, our uh, salaries to be paid. So I invite you to give back, give some love to our center. And you can either, if you're writing a check, you can send it. Uh, the address is 1201 Puerta del Sol. San Clemente, California, 92673. Or if you want, just go to the our website and donate there. If this is not a time for you to give, find something else to give. Can you give a kindness? Can you give a prayer? Can you give a positive thought? Can you give freedom? Whatever it is, give that thing. So we just take our gift. If we have it in our hands, we just take our gift and we bless it and praise it and know that this praise, this blessing multiplies this good. It's greater now than it's ever been before. There's more because God's beingness is imbued in it and it has grown and prospered. So I give great thanks because my offering is my awareness of the presence of God, my awareness that God is my source. And so with great, great joy for all that I have and all that I am, I give with love. I simply release this word to the action of law. It's done. And so it is. So we're going to close with a peace song, and I actually have Diane King Van singing it for us. So um, <laughs> and thank you for singing along with me last week. This is me as the sound engineer. Okay. Take the person's hand beside you. beside you and if you don't So it is, to, today I just want to make you aware that at 1 o'clock there's Conscious Connections on Zoom. At 3 o'clock, Jimmy Van is holding a Facebook Live Easter music. How fantastic. And at 6 o'clock, Daniel Namod is uh, presenting his songs on Facebook Live. It's a wonderful day and all the better because you are here. Happy Easter!